Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and today I want to talk about a dramatic redesign of our farm and gardens based on comments you gave on our last tour video. That was about a month ago, and at the time, I unveiled this map to show the different areas of the garden and our plans to increase visitor traffic and to allow more people onto the farm to see the different gardens, and of course, to drive some plant sales. Uh, this is our next step in trying to make a living out of growing plants here on the property. Lisa and I were so gratified by the comments that we received back. Not so much, I have to say, the ones that were pat you on the back and you're doing a great job and it looks good, but more so those ones that were constructively critical and questioned our assumptions. Uh, one of the assumptions that we made that I think was a bad one was that everybody had to visit every part of our farm. People gave back the feedback said boy I'm tired just walking you watching you walk around uh, people like Adrian Rodriguez and Mike Sapp uh, directly questioned the value of putting people out into the orchard or putting them into the front yard uh, those areas of the property that may be nice gardens but won't result in any additional plant sales and there's no business case to be made for them based on comments like those we've done a redesign of the flow of the garden that I want to show you right now so looking at that map again, you can see that our previous path led people through the retail area, down through the rose field towards the rose garden, back up the boulevard, and then swung them by the use of an S-shaped garden towards a newly established lavender garden, which would lead them towards the front yard, then to the winter garden, orchard, and so on, and then back towards the woodland area. That is quite a loop. And uh, you know, once again, based on your comments, I really did do some soul searching. Lisa and I both had a look at it and said, hey, this isn't actually benefiting us. So we've simplified it. And uh, you know, we'll talk about some of the other features that people commented on, but the simplified new flow goes the opposite direction, more or less. Sure, there's still a direct way to the greenhouse, the rose greenhouse, but the way towards the rose garden now goes directly straight through uh, the woodland area and uh, what would have been the uh, lavender garden, now we're making that into a retail area for our perennials and other companion plants. More on that in a minute. The S-shaped garden is still happening, but it just works as a way to steer people uh, away from the house and the areas that we're no longer trying to showcase and put them into the boulevard over towards the rose garden and then to the rose stock field and the rose stock field during the early part of the selling season serves the function of showing people what the plants what the roses look like in full bloom and in their full habit and so it will definitely help with sales as I show you some of the footage of the changes we've already made, you may note that the seasons have changed quite a bit. It was looking a little bit dry and worn out at the end of summer. Uh, now we've had some moisture, so things are greened up a little bit. And we've also seen the onset of fall color, so that's nice to look at. So I want to take you back through some of that footage to show you some of the projects we've already started here. First of all, we started putting in a bit of fencing. The fencing that we're using is just simple post and chain. We've set it up along the side of the parking lot to sort of formalize things a little bit and we'll be using that wherever we need to that we think that it will help to define an area for our customers. The other section I wanted to highlight here is that as you walk out of that woodland area along the chip path that we've set up these boxes and these boxes and also on the sides of those you're going to see that we've used the post and chain again to define the selling area for the perennials. Now some people asked the question why are you trying to sell so many other plants or highlight so many other plants when you are in fact a specialty rose nursery? I have to answer that one most directly is to say that it has always been my view that roses don't work on their own. Uh, it, you know, I've said it in many videos now that roses fit into plantings with other plants. Uh, and so it's sort of like walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. Uh, I definitely want our nursery to offer shrubs, trees, annuals and perennials that work well to make roses work well in your garden. So that's the th thinking behind that. Continuing on, you're going to see the S garden here. That S-shaped garden uh, is a long one. It's actually quite large. And I started to place out some plants for planting here. Obviously the plants aren't going in this fall. They're a little bit too small for that. But the front row, that's where the displaced lavender is going to go. So where we were going to have the lavender garden, the lavender that I that I prepared for that is now going to make the front of this S-shaped garden, so we still will have our lavender. Behind that are two different types of grass. There's a mully grass and also a penicetum. I think it's redhead is the cultivar. Those will both be, be 
big grand bold grasses but not right away obviously and the other thing is to say that they will be blooming a little bit later than our peak season so probably into more uh, June July rather than um, April May June so that's a that's something that will extend our season on the back end and keep interest up in the garden I want to now address some very specific comments. People like Elaine Gary and Judy McCarrow and many others talk to me about the need for more sitting spaces, more benches like this in the property. I have to say, this makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, if I'm going to ask people to wander around the property, if I want them to sit and enjoy and have a way to really appreciate this garden, uh, having sitting spaces around the property is an absolute must, and we've made some strides towards that. I've already placed a couple out into the landscape, including this one, but also one in the woodland area. I'll unsho insert some footage of that. But also in the brand new greenhouse, I've started assembling things uh, for placement around the yard. Uh, I have the two benches there, but also the sales cart that I unveiled in one of my recent videos that will also be out in the driveway. So that's where all of that stuff is living for now. Now it was Jane Hazen who brought up a, a really interesting point about the placement of benches and their ability to direct the attention of visitors. And which the way she kind of explained it to me is that the way it faces is the way people will look. So if I had one of these at the end of the boulevard there with its back to the house and some nice plantings behind it, it's almost like people won't even see the house, which you know I know is an exaggeration, but it's like, telling them where to direct their attention makes the thing behind it less visible. It makes a lot of sense to me, so thank you so much for that insight. Next up, commenters like Delicate Dave and Paul Mangotti really pointed out the need to have clear signage anywhere where a person could be confused about where to go. If I'm branching off the, the path, between the greenhouse and the rose garden, I need to have a sign right there that says where that's going to go. Obviously, I know where all the different gardens are, I know what I call them, but customers are going to need to have clear signage, even if it's just a matter of telling them that they're going around the woodland loop, that's something that should be signed. So that's something we'll be addressing over this winter. I don't have anything in place for that, but it's something that we'll be taking care of over this winter. One final comment I wanted to point out specifically was for, from a guy named Stephen Stillwell. And thank you so much for your comment about addressing my concerns about the composting and branches and waste that comes from my roses. If you'll recall in the previous video, I had this big, ugly burn pile that I accumulate throughout the season and it was just a real eyesore and it stood right in the way of the customer flow. Well happy to say we have cleared that up and I'm going to insert some footage now where you can see that that is now clear and reseeded and looks much much better but in addition to where the burn pile was the area over by the shed is going to have a space for some compost bins that I'm going to actively be managing greens, browns, the whole works. I might make some videos on that, but the idea is to use it as a way to highlight that real farms have real waste and this is the way they deal with it. And if I have visitors to the farm, this might prove as an educational opportunity as well. Thank you so much, Stephen, for pointing me in that direction. While we're in that same area, I just want to throw in one clip of footage. A little further down the fence line I had, or further down by the greenhouse, I had some grapes planted on these uh, wooden supports. We've taken the grapes out and now we're starting to plant roses up there. Once again, responding to the comments that we should be highlighting more roses in the landscape as a way to improve sales. I mean, all of this is intended to be a retail space in a kind of a way, and so highlighting more roses definitely and I'm also glad we cleaned up the waste along the fence line there. It makes a nice clear view and one of the nicest views from our property. All right, that's all I have for you for an update and I hope that uh, that, that was really clear to you. If you have any questions, drop those down into the comments and I just wanna finish this by saying how much Lisa and I appreciate everybody who contributed comments and helped us with this redesign. Uh, you know, obviously I hope to see some of you on the farm someday so you can see it in person, but in the meantime, thank you so much for all of your contributions.